A new market survey has revealed that Pullman is missing out on a large amount of cash. We tell what new opportunities might be coming to Pullman. An ASWSU elections closed tonight. Our reporter Abby Davis is on scene to let you know when you need to get your votes in by. Studios on the campus of Washington State University. This is Murrow News 8. Good evening. I'm Colby and Brad. And I'm Drew Amergy. Welcome to Murrow News 8. Whitman County Sheriff's deputies arrested a 51-year-old lacrosse man in an alleged domestic violence incident. Victims told deputies that suspect Darren Barry assaulted them, held them against their will, and threatened to kill them. Barry is scheduled to make his first court appearance Monday afternoon. Pullman is missing out on over $200 million in consumer spending every year, according to a new survey. The City of Pullman's Economic Development Director released the survey, which showed a $240 million gap between demand and the supply of products and services in the area. The study showed a $41 million gap in food and beverages in stores and a $19 million gap in food and drinking places. University of Idaho Extension's efforts in COVID-19 vaccine education was recently recognized by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Through an agreement with the CDC units at land-grant universities across the nation, received funding and launched the program in June of 2021 to address health disparities among rural and other underserved communities. University of Idaho's enrollment continues to grow. The 2022 spring enrollment census taken mid-semester shows 9,700 students at the university. This is a 70 student increase from a year ago. Meanwhile, enrollment at WSU continues to decrease. We tried to reach out to WSU spokesperson Phil Weiler if this could have anything to do with the WSU seeing decline enrollment numbers, but we were unable to reach him. Nearly 50 years after the college master house was demolished, along with the Black Cultural Center, which was housed inside, the University of Idaho once again has dedicated space for black students on campus. Today, black students make up approximately 1% of the university's student population. Narcisse Mabibia, president of the U University of Idaho's Black Student Union, says the organization gives black students a sense of community and spreads an understanding of black culture on a predominantly white campus. Whitman County Auditor Sandy Jamison wants to keep her position for another term. Jamison put out a press release saying that she wants to continue to see her office grow. Jamison also said that she wants to maintain positive interactions between the auditor's office and the community and set a good example for younger generation working for the county. The faces of WSU's student government are changing soon. Murrow News 8 reporter Abby Davis is on the scene with an explanation. ASWSU elections are in full swing, and this year there are two presidential tickets. Jacob Martinez and Kiana Parsi are running against Sidney Finch and Kelt Visser. As we can see here, I'm right in front of Martinez and Parsi's campaign team. They're right here on the mall. The other campaign ticket is right in front of the Chinook Student Center. I've just grown such a passion to advocate for students and serve the student body and be the voice. So if elected, I feel like I have the passion, the drive, and the commitment to ensuring that all students' voices are being heard. Candidates started campaigning a few weeks before spring break and voting opened yesterday morning and closes tonight at 7. Both tickets are planning on having a watch party tonight at 8 p.m. before the winner is announced. Thanks, Abby. Actor RJ Mitty, best known for playing Walter Flynn White Jr. on the TV series Breaking Bad, is speaking in the Cub Jr. Ballroom today. Mitty will discuss living with cerebral palsy and the impact it has had on his career. The event is free and will also be live streamed as well. We saw the mercury pass 60 today on the thermometer. Coming up, Michelle Harmon will tell us if this weather will be sticking around or if it will dip back down. It's okay to be scared. Hmm? You don't have to be so strong. Strength is not optional. This is my mother, my purpose, 
Real muscle is lifting her spirits between bedpans and bad news from doctors that doubt her strength. Strength is buried in bills, managing meds, and swallowing those moments of, Mom, it's me, your daughter. Remember, my strength is super, but I'm still human, right? Look who's here. There she is. Thanks for your patience. Thank you. How you feel? If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community or call 1-877-333-5885. Susan Lundquist is retiring after spending almost 45 years working at WSU. Lundquist started working at the, at the WSU libraries in 1977 and took over as Director of Administrative Services in 2015. She received the Crimson Spirit Award from the university in 2018. Her last day will be on March 31st. It's starting to finally feel like spring. How long can we expect this weather to hold out, Michelle? Well, Colby, I think that the weather is going to be a little bit warmer here, so we can look forward to a bit more sunshine, a bit more warmer weather. As you can see today, we have a high of 62 and a low of 38. And the, we have about 7 miles per hour winds, but it could get up to 13. Um, and the sun is setting later and later, which means summer is closer and closer. And it's supposed to set today around 7.05. Tomorrow we can see some more sun, um, but it is going to be a little bit cloudy here and there, but not too much. Mostly sun, mostly clear skies. Um, and we're going to have a low of 39 and a high of 55. And you can see the winds are going to sit around 6 miles per hour. And and the sun's supposed to rise around 6.35 tomorrow morning, and it's supposed to set around 7.07 p.m. Moving on over here to the state map, we've already talked about Pullman, but you can see up here in Spokane, we're going to have temperatures of around 64 and lows of 35. It's going to be a little overcast, a little cloudy, and we have a bit more sun than they do right now. Um, and over here in the central part of the state, we can see that the Tri-Cities and Yakima is experiencing some beautiful beautiful sunshine today. Tri-Cities has a high of 71 and a low of 32, while Yakima over here has a high of 67 and a low of 35. Moving on over here to the west side of the state, we can see our friends in Seattle and Olympia are experiencing some rain like usual. Um, Olympia has highs of 48 and a low of 33, while Seattle has highs of 55 and a low of 38. Moving on to the five-day forecast, you can see it's going to warm up a bit here and get a little cloudier. Um, Thursday, we can expect some sun, and Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, it will be cloudier, but temperatures are going to rise. On Friday, we have a high of 58. Saturday, we have a high of 62. And Sunday, we have a high of 65. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to take my dogs to the park this weekend to celebrate the warmer weather we're having. What are you guys going to do? Yeah, it's going to be a great day to get outside. I, I kind of want to hit a body of water, maybe throw a football around with some friends. It'll be nice to get some rays. What about you? Absolutely, Drew. I was thinking of going fishing. So if you're trying to find that body of water, maybe bring a little extra rod and reel. You can, I'm not sure how you are with the reel and the casting, but you know what they say about a bad day of fishing is always a better day than a good bad day at work. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, work, so you're right, you're right. Um, yeah, you know, speaking of throwing the football around, you know, the crazy NFL offseason continues to dominate the sports world. Shane Merwin tells us which big-name players are on the move to new cities. And spring football is back on the Palouse. Hear what a key veteran player has to say about the team. What was that quote, Colby? Yeah. <laughs> No, you're good.
Good evening, Sugar Shane with Sports. Breaking news in the NFL this morning as one of the league's top receivers is relocating. Tyree Kill, an all-pro receiver and return man for the Kansas City Chiefs, is heading to Miami for a first, second, two-fourths, and a sixth-round pick. The contract is a four-year deal worth $120 million. Dolphins will pair the speedster up opposite side of Jalen Waddell for the 2022 season and beyond. Needless to say, this year's NFL free agency has shocked teams and fans alike with some of the league's most prolific names heading to a new city. Last Friday, Deshaun Watson was sent to the Cleveland Browns on a $240 million deal. We've also seen Chandler Jones prepare to bring his pass rushing abilities to Las Vegas and Devontae Adams to line up opposite side of him in the silver and black. Christian Kirk looks to fill the Jaguars' needed wide receiver one position, and teams like Pittsburgh, Indy, and Atlanta will have new men under center this September. Trubisky signed with the Steelers, Matt Ryan signed with the Colts after being traded from the Falcons, and shortly after, the Falcons brought in a new QB1 and veteran Marcus Mariota. Key players that remain unsigned to keep an eye on in the upcoming weeks are Bobby Wagner, Tyron Matthew, Jarvis Landry, Baker Mayfield, and Julio Jones. Speaking of football, the first day of spring football practice was this morning as the Cougs prepare for the 2022 season under head coach Jake Dickert. The Cougs seem to be leaving the run and shoot offense in the past and bringing in a modified version of the air raid offense that offensive coordinator Eric Morris is bringing over to the Palouse. The Cougs will be looking to some of the younger talent on the roster after losing some of their key veterans, something defensive end Brennan Jackson highlighted in an interview earlier this morning. I mean, I think just today's evident of it. I mean, it just seems like we've been playing with these guys for 10, 11 weeks already. You know, they just kind of fit in really well with the scheme. And I think just kind of our culture is that everyone is, you know, has a purpose, everyone has a role, and everyone's needed. So the minute we, we lose someone like Jihad, just two amazing players here, guys are starting to step up. And whether those guys that are already here are transfers, I mean, that's the standard they have to uphold. So, you know, coming in today, you can kind of see how those guys just kind of take the next step forward. Four-seed Cougs will take on two-seeded BYU tonight in Provo. The winner will earn a trip to Madison Square Garden in New York and a spot in the NIT Finals. The game tips off at 6 p.m. and will air on ESPN2. It will also be live-streamed on Watch ESPN. And that's all I have for sports. It's a special day for people who like to combine chips and dip. We'll tell you why after the break. Days. Months. I'm Jim from across the street. Years. I'd like to give you this. A lifetime. Can rush by without realizing what we're missing. We lose some of the best moments. Some that may never repeat. Come on. Or detach from people around us. Our loved ones grow used to this pattern. But it doesn't have to be that way. We have a choice to take action. It's never too late to live a full life again. Hear how many of us Vietnam veterans have managed our mental health and reconnected with our families. Visit maketheconnection.net to find out more. If you scream for ice cream, then March 24th is the day for you. The Graduate Student and Professional Student Association is holding an ice cream social. It is open to all graduate and professional students. It will be held from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Ferdinand's. Free ice cream will be given to the first 100 students only, and be sure to remember your student IDs. It's March 23rd, so you know what that means. It's National Chip and Dip Day. So go out and get a bag of your favorite trips and your favorite dip and celebrate accordingly. Well, I don't know about you, Colby, but I do like some queso dip. What is your favorite chip? Absolutely, dip? Drew. I mean, I got to go with the Spanish dip, artichoke dip myself, but mm. there's nothing wrong with the little Tostitos and mm -hmm. some salsa there. Yeah, this is an interesting combo. We got the, we got the pops going right mm -hmm. now. And, and with the queso, it's an interesting, salty, cheesy kind of thing. Uh, but uh, that's going to be it for us today. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good night.